welcome and good evening, family. Uh, I am Elder Taryn Jones, and this is... Tisa Jones. All right, Tisa Jones. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, um, we are members, obviously, of Eternal Life. Um, I'm, I'm a leader. She's a leader. Uh, we both um, do a couple of things in the ministry, but um, uh, I guess more importantly, we're um, ministering over to youth um, right now. That's kind of our, our call. And um, we've been given the opportunity for the next few weeks to uh, sit with you virtually and share uh, with you uh, the topic of the biblical family. Um, we definitely uh, have some experience with family, large family. Um, we have six children, been married for uh, 24, five we're years. 25, 25. Yeah, no, see, it's good when she doesn't quite remember to, because then I'm not, I don't get in trouble for it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, so we definitely have some experience um, with it um, as Christians as well, right? And so we started off, um, um, you know, not believe, not believers, non-believers, um, and then we we uh, shortly after our marriage, we actually both of us got saved, uh, came to the Lord, and started uh, on the, the life journey of living a life pleasing uh, to our our God, our Father, and so and we're not experts. Um, but we definitely have a lot of, uh, of experience in, in, and have the passion um, to really have a biblical, godly family to represent uh, the kingdom of heaven uh, in this earth. And so um, we've already prayed, so we're going to go ahead and, and, and dive in. So uh, today is going to be just a, a general introduction of, uh, of the family. Um, we're going to cover a couple of things. Um, and I think today uh, we want the people to get out of today's um, uh, today's session that the family is important. Um, we're not going to dive into any relationship type things and husband and wife and things like that. But we, we want to cover um, and, and get you guys to understand, um, help you guys to understand that um, that family is important. It's important to God. It's important uh, to God's people, as we see um, in Scripture. And I think we would all agree on here that, uh, that it's important to us. It's really important to us that, that family um, is healthy, uh, vibrant, um, happy, um, and representing uh, the kingdom of heaven. And so um, God basically instituted um, about four spheres of influence um, and responsibility, um, one being the individual. So you and I individually, we have uh, a sphere of, we have influence, we have responsibility, um, the family, uh, the church, and then you see civil government a little bit in, in Scripture where uh, folks are setting up and establishing uh, uh, a way to control or to ensure that the law is being, um, being carried out. Um, we're talking mostly about family, that, that unit there, um, but it incorporates individuals, right? And so we, we're going to dabble on some individual um, things as well. Let me turn this off. Um, so yes, the next three weeks, we're going to be uh, talking about this, today's introduction. Um, next week, the, the plan is to talk about uh, marriage, so husband and wife relationship, how that works. Um, and then the week after that, um, we get into more of the, the, the bigger family picture where we're incorporating the, the children, so sons and daughters, and, and I know you wanted to cover some extended family too, mm -hmm. um, so that way we're incorporating everybody into this, into this uh, discussion in Bible study. We don't really want to leave anybody out. And so... Um, we're gonna make sure that we incorporate, you know, everyone into this. Um, uh, so, including single people and things, things of that nature that may not have kids or children. Um, so, we're gonna open with uh, Matthew six and thirty-three. Um, you want to read it from that translation, and I'll I'll read it from this one. Uh, Matthew six and thirty-three. All right. New King James Version says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And this version I'm reading is the, uh, the Living Bible, and it says, And uh, he will give them to you if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. Um, and so the question could be, why, why you pick that? Because we're talking about family. Um, that scripture is important. Um, because whenever we're talking about scripture, you know, God's word, um, when I'm seeking the kingdom, one thing I'm doing is I'm trying to understand God's way of doing things, right? And so we're going to be talking over the next few weeks 
um, about God's way of doing, uh, of God's way of, of the family, right? And what he desires um, uh, for, for the family, how the family should operate and, and relate to one another and bless and support and honor and commit to one another. Um, and so, you know, it's important because there can be no expectation of a healthy, vibrant, uh, uh, God-fulfilling family that's a light to the world if we don't do it God's way. And so we're going to dig a little deeper, obviously, in, in the next few weeks, not necessarily today. Um, and, and, and we're going to go in with the understanding that we're trying to learn something that we can then uh, uh, apply to our lives, into our families, so that um, uh, that we can walk out this um, this family life that God wants us to, to live. Um, so family is a big deal to God. It's a big deal in Scripture. Is to Israel, you see, it's a big deal. We're going to cover some of that stuff. And we're not just talking necessarily about um, family is great. Let's go out and have fun and party and whatnot. Which is certainly fun, certainly you know important. Uh, we need to do that. We need to uh, to to get out of all of the the work and all of that jazz and and just spend time together. It's fellowship and whatnot. Um, but again, it's also being the light, right? It's actually you know walking in. Um, so me being the godly husband that God called called me to be. Um, um, you know, being you being the the godly wife and our children being godly children and us playing a part in raising them and helping them to be that way. And so it's not just have fun and just raise kids that are just happy, but it's also raising kids that are, that's going to glorify and honor, honor God. Um, so, so just like our bodies are designed to function a certain way, you know, God created the family to, to function a certain way. So we're going to talk and, and go through some scripture. Um, um, first, showing you that um, the references of family in scripture. Um, you want to you read, read some of those? Mm -hmm. All right. First, we're going to have uh, John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. All right. And that says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Cool. And the next one, uh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Okay. Um, let's, do, uh, yeah. let's just use that on the white All right, that's Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Mm -hmm. And it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Mm -hmm. And so God made a way for us um, from the beginning um, to be adopted into his family. Um, when I was reading that particular scripture, I thought about, um, about adoption. Um, and what we see in adoption spiritually, sometimes we don't necessarily see adoption um, naturally. And so natural adoption, right? We bring somebody into the family and they don't necessarily, maybe over time, adopt the, the, the way of the family, right? Yeah. They come in with their own way, right? Um, but here in scripture, you know, we're coming in um, outside of the family. We're coming in, being adopted into God's family. And, and, um, and Paul tells us um, that we become new creatures, mm -hmm. right? We, we, we come into the family with a, re with a renewed image, basically, mm -hmm. right? God created us in the beginning. In his image and likeness, there was a fall. So there's a disconnect. There's something that's different from us born into the world now than when Adam and Eve were created. And so now through Jesus Christ, we now are back into God's family and we look more like God again, mm -hmm. right? The way he created us um, to be back in his image and, and likeness. Um, and so you'll see references throughout the, throughout the Bible. We're not going to go into all of them, but there are, are references about uh, family and being adopted into family and that we're children, we're daughters and sons. Um, 
in the kingdom of heaven. Um, so the purpose, and we're going to cover a couple of purposes of family. Um, the first one is to uh, to reflect heaven. So family reflects heaven. And so uh, John one and one, John one one through two says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God." And Genesis 1, 1 through 3 says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And so already before man is even created, we see family, right? We see the Godhead in existence, in relationship, close relationship, um, you know, before um, Adam and Eve are even even created, they're in the process of getting to that point. But family is already in existence before uh, before we come on the scene. Um, so let's go to John seventeen twenty through twenty three. It says, "I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may be." one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I gave, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, in them, I'm sorry, I in them, and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. And so you see this idea of us being one um, and one with God as they are one. And so our, our unification, not just in the larger church, but also in our family, right? Because, you know, it's kind of difficult to be uh, unified in church if the family's not unified mm -hmm. because the church is made up of families and individuals and whatnot. And so, um, and so we can't expect the church to be unified if our homes, if we're not unified in our homes. Right. And so that's what comes first, right? The unification in a home comes first. Then we can express that unification um, among others. Um, Romans uh, 8, 12 through 17 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to uh, the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, uh, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Um, I was sharing with my wife that when I was reading that, um, I kind of knew it, but I didn't know the details of it. Um, but, you know, when, when uh, Paul's writing this letter to the Roman church, he uses two different words when he's talking in this passage of scripture. The, the, you know, so when he talks about son, he's using the Greek word um, uh, uh, weos. And he's using a different word when he talks about children, right? And so, you know, weos uh, is... Is is typically used to more in a more stricter sense to mean uh, male, you know, an actual son, male, um, but can be broadly used um, to, to mean children. So it could be male or female in a broad sense. Um, the other word when he talked when he actually, was actually saying children further down in that passage of scripture, he's actually talking about male and female. And so there's a difference. There's a reason why Paul uses those two different words when he's writing this letter. Um, weos is understood to mean um, someone that's so close in likeness to the other that it's difficult to determine the differences, right? And so if you could imagine like um, going in to a family reunion and somebody's like, girl, you look just like your mama, <laughs> right? Or, or boy, you look just like your daddy. All right, it's, it's, it's akin to that. It's like, man, you look just like him. Or you look just like her. And so Paul is saying, if you're led by the Spirit, 
you look just you, your your character is just like God. Like there's there's hard, it's hard to tell the difference between the two, right? And so in this, right, when 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 I'm walking in the character of God, especially in the areas of me being a husband and you being a, a wife, you know, we're we're reflecting reflecting heaven in that, in that regard. When we're when we're unified and working together as one to glorify God, we're 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 uh, reflecting heaven. And so the goal is, right, and well, one of the purposes of a family is to be unified and reflect, reflect heaven, because heaven, the kingdom, is is, is unified. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say? Uh -huh. Not for that one. Okay. Um, and in marriage, we're going to dive into this a little more next week when we get to the to meat of some of this stuff. Um, in, in Ephesians 5, uh, 24 through 25, uh, it says, Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let their wives uh, be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. And so what you see is um, us reflecting heaven right and how we relate to one another in marriage mm -hmm. right right um it's it's paul is saying you know submit to me as you know as a church submits to christ and me love you right. as christ loved the church right and so there's really a, a submission to one another mm -hmm. right i'm giving up something right i'm giving up my way to support you and and, and, and to minister to you and be there for you and then the same is, is the other way around right and so it's not this uh uh and I don't want to get too deep because we're going to talk about it next week. It's not this lording over a, a, as a husband, right? It's this we're submitting one to another um, to support one another. Um, and so we can then glorify God in whatever areas of ministry and life that he wants us to, uh, uh, to live. So uh, reflect heaven, right? Um, and you, you're going to cover the second point? the uh, fellowship and support. And so there's, there's a second reason we, uh, we have family is for uh, fellowship and support. And Tisa, you want, you want to read those uh, yep. scriptures? All right. In the United States, we call the current administration the first family. But the first family of the world is seen in Genesis 1 through 2. Um, in Genesis 2, verse 7, we, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Then also Genesis 2, 21 through 25, it says, And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall on Adam. He slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Cool. So God said it, was, it wasn't good for Adam to be alone, although he was in fellowship with God. And there was obviously something that Adam required that God wanted him to have when he created woman. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, so it, it was, it's ironic. Well, not ironic, but it's, it, it was, it was weird for God to say that uh, it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it? Like, like you're with God, walking with God in the garden and God's like, eh, it's not good for you to be alone when, when he was actually in fellowship with, with God. Right. Right. And so there's obviously something that God needed to provide an addition, right, to being with himself. And, and, and what, I, what I got out of it was there was no way for Adam to truly relate to God, right? He had nobody else to relate to. There was nothing else in existence at that time like him, mm -hmm. right? Animals were existence. They could fellowship with one another um, and, and, you know, and be of the same likeness um, and, and be able to relate to one another. But Adam, he was kind of the only one like him, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so... Um, Obviously, God thought that wasn't good. Right. Right. It's not good for you to be alone and be by yourself and have to have nobody that you can relate to. And and, and so he created created Eve. I also thought um, in that one, the fact that, you know, God's greater purpose would have been for him to be able to procreate. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. like he said, this yep. is family. You know, this was the first family, um, Adam and Eve. But, you mm -hmm. know, Adam couldn't do that like, right. by right. himself. Right. So. You know, the purpose, the greater purpose that God had for them could not be fulfilled mm -hmm. if he hadn't brought Eve on the scene. Right, right. Because, yeah, I mean, there's nobody else to to, to do that with. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it was funny because me and Tisa were, uh, 
you know, we're, we're doing our Bible study in the morning um, or our scripture reading in the morning. And um, and I, I go through uh, uh, Genesis looking at um, you know, the lineage and whatnot in Genesis. And God shows me something. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I come downstairs and then we're sitting down in the living room, actually right behind us. And uh, she said, guess what I read this morning? I read and I was like, no way. This, it's the same exact thing. <laughs> That the Lord showed me, like, mm-hmm. how amazing is that? You want to you wanna talk about it? I mean, um, and, and it's really just a, like a little nugget, a tidbit. It's not really a, a significant thing to, to, in terms of, of family, but it was pretty cool, cool fact. Yeah, it was just basically about how long people lived back then. They were able to see, like, several generations. So he was going through the whole, because he likes that, the whole lineage of, mm-hmm. you know, Adam and Eve and just keep on going. And then he realized that um, Adam lived until he was 930, and he was living when Lamech, which was Noah's father, was born, was there. Um, Then eight generations down, he was still there. So he could see eight generations down. Like, he didn't just see his grandchildren or his great-grandchildren. He was, what was that? He saw six X grandchildren (laughs) Yeah, could you imagine that? That's cool. So, you know, some people take pictures, right? And they take pictures of, like, you know, like, maybe us, and then our kids, and then our grandkids. And if you're lucky, maybe you can get great grandkids in the picture. But he's like, great, 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 right. great, great grandkids mm-hmm. he was able to see. I thought that was pretty pretty cool mm-hmm. um, that, he, that he was able to see all of that. Um, so just, again, just a, 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 a nice uh, fun fact. Um, so we're gonna, let's go through some scripture and just look at the biblical families um, of scripture and kind of see how they lived, right? And, and see what they valued. Um, uh, one thing we know uh, from scripture is that they had much respect and honor for the family. Um, the first point is that parents were highly regarded, right? So much so um, that in the Ten Commandments that God you know, gave Moses, um, you know, the first four were uh, dealing with the relationship between us and God. Um, but then the last six were dealing with the relationship between each other, right? So the first four were like more like vertical relationship. Um, and then the last six were more horizontal. But the first of the horizontal relationship um, laws, if you will, um, or commandments, was to honor your mother and your father, right? He could have placed that in any order, but the first one that deals with dealing with people, he's saying honor your mother, uh, your father and your mother. Um, and the reason he puts it is that your days may, may, be, may be long, mm-hmm. right? Maybe gone. And so there's blessing that comes with honoring your parents. Mm-hmm. Um, the second point is children are considered a blessing, right? I know a lot of people, you know, um, and when they find out they're pregnant, it's like, ah, oh, another baby, another baby, more responsibility, you know, more bills, more this, more that. Um, but children was a, a great blessing back then. I mean, you know, some of the women, it was like, if I don't have a baby, what's the point of living, right? right? I mean, their perspective was we need to you know, we need to be fruitful and multiply, yeah. right? That's, that was their mindset. We need to fill the earth with kingdom people, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of how, how we've been doing, right? Mm-hmm. We, we, you know, we're, we're cool with having more. Um, we're cool with having more. I ain't trying to fill the earth. Um, but yeah, we're not trying to fill the earth, obviously. <laughs> and if God says no, then we're fine with that too, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the, men- the mentality is it's not a bad thing, right? It's a blessing, for us to be able to have children, to care for, to raise, uh, to teach, um, you know, God's ways to, so that they can grow up and, and be this, the light in the world. Because what we don't want, what we don't want, and I'm not trying to, you know, propose that you guys go out and start having babies. I'm not saying that. Um, if it's the Lord's will, then let it be. But if not, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, but 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 what we need to be mindful of is we don't want to. Uh, we don't want the world to get darker, right? Mm-hmm. And so the less light, the less godly people we have in the earth, the darker the world gets, mm-hmm. right? Because the less influence we have in the world. And so um, children are a blessing, right? They're, they're a blessing. They, you know, they can, it can get, uh, as some people would say, on your last nerve <laughs> sometimes, but, um, but, but they're, uh, they're a blessing. Um, Psalm 127 and 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of of the womb is a reward. Wow, it's a reward. Yeah. Wow, get excited, get excited. Yeah, I remember, um, I don't remember which child it was, but 
um, Pastor James and Pastor Priscilla have been there for us basically through, I think we only had one when we came to the ministry, but mm -hmm. you know, the others, yeah. they followed. And I do remember Pastor Priscilla sharing um, that scripture with me. And I didn't know any better. All I knew was people had children again, because you know, when you're not saved, all you think about is, oh, family, you know, families have children. So, you know, it's just a part of the plan. It's a part of the process. But she taught me that children were a blessing from the Lord. And that mm -hmm. actually made it, I um, mean, that it was an inheritance, that it was a reward for it. And so that actually made it for me where when I would get pregnant again, I was like, wow, you know, this is something that God is, God is excited about it. Mm -hmm. So, and like he said, um, this is, we have an opportunity to take a part in God's plan. Right. And I feel like the women back then, you know, they knew that God had made certain promises to the patriarchs. So when they were having children, it wasn't just we just having children. They wanted to be a part of that blessing. They wanted to take part in that. So that was the way that God, um, mm -hmm. God showed it to them. Right. So. right, right. Yeah. And they just didn't they just they didn't just have kids. either. Right. Right? They raised them. They did. You know, and taught them about God. Um, and, and that's that's more in week three. But um, mm -hmm. but but good to know. Um, and lineage was significant, right? So where you came from, you know, mm -hmm. it mattered, right? You know, and in the world today, you know, you know, parents aren't being honored, lineage isn't being respected. Some right. people don't really care about where they came from, who their great grandparents were, what they did in life, you know. Um, but to them, it was it was crazy important. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we see in Matthew, um, uh, Matthew one one through seventeen, we get the lineage, um all the way to, to, to Jesus, right? Um, and in Luke 3, uh, 23 through 38, it's the same thing, right? And so um, uh, I believe it's Matthew covers uh, uh, David to Joseph and then Luke covers David to Mary. And so we see that both of them came from, uh, from, from David, right? To, to meet the, uh, uh, the prophecy, to fulfill prophecy. And uh, Paul talks about in Philippians 3 and 5, we're going to read that. It says, uh, let me scroll up some. Uh, it says, beware of dogs, beware of evildoers, beware of the uh, mutilation, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though, so don't I don't have confidence in your flesh. Though I might, I'm, I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And then he gets into why. Why can I have more confidence in the flesh? Well, I was circumcised on the eighth day, right? He's going back to, you know, uh, the, the ways of, of Israel. I was circumcised on the eighth day uh, of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church. And so he, he's calling the fact that, man, I can trace my heritage back mm -hmm. to Benjamin, right. right? That's big. That's big. I mean, many of us in America, we can't go back that far, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because of the way, you know, the, how America is and became. Um, but, you know, when I, was, when I started reading this, I... Because back in the day, I um, I wanted to go back and look at, you know, because I, I know my grandparents. I just don't know great grandparents and higher. And so I kind of wanted to go back and start looking at that. And when I started reading through this and it, it sparked, it sparked, it sparked that interest again to um, to want to go back and and see my family. not not just to see what they did and how they worked, but man, did they serve the Lord? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Like what did they do for, for God is, right. is, is, is also the, the part I wanted to see. Um. In Matthew 1 and 1, Jesus is referred to the son of David, the son of Abraham. Um, when I think about that, um, about lineage and knowing where you come from, sometimes when I go to a family reunion, um, and I haven't been in a couple of years, but when I go to my, on my father's side, um, not everybody knows me, right? Yeah. I walk around, and they're like, I'm just, for most people, I'm just some, well, now I'm not a kid, but at, back then I was some kid walking around. Um, and it wasn't until I told them who my daddy was when they realized who I was, mm -hmm. right? Who are you? Who's, who, whose son is you? Oh, I'm, I'm Curtis' son. Oh! And then the connection is established, right? And so when you know, you know your history is important, mm -hmm. right? Because you can, you, it gives you that connection. Um, 
And uh, the second point, right, so we covered that uh, they had much respect for the family. Um, uh, they also did ministry together, and this is going to be our last point, um, and we'll spend maybe a couple of minutes on that, and we'll close. Um, but we see the biblical family doing ministry together. Mm -hmm. right? You want to read Romans uh, 16 and 3? I'll pull it up here. Yep. It says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so, you know, Paul is saying that both of these, both of them are my fellow workers in Christ. Uh, both, you know, and they're married, right? Priscilla and Aquila, they're, uh, they're a married couple. Um, and so it's akin to kind of what we're doing here, right? We're doing right. ministry together, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's a blessing. It feels good. Every time we, you know, minister to the kids, um, obviously here, but like when we do it in church, like when we walk away, we're like, man, that was great. Mm -hmm. That was good. We really, really did something there. We poured into their lives and we did it together, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's just blessing in just doing it, right? Like the feeling you get out of it, the satisfaction you get out of it, um, so amazing. And so, you know, if you're not doing ministry with your family, so to speak, then, you know, we encourage that, mm -hmm. right? Right? Husband and wife. Um, and we, and we, see it, we see it in our church too, right? Mm -hmm. Pastor, Pastor James is really good with that, like, right? Like, the media ministry was run by mostly by the Jones family before, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, really, it's true, mm -hmm. right? And so, and, and the praise and worship team, right? I was a drummer, and you were the praise and worship leader. Even now, families running the, the praise and worship team, mm -hmm. right? You know, uh, Minister Wallace and uh, and Brenda, right? They're running the ministry, uh, the, the praise and worship team, and then some of the other singers are on there are also part of the family, mm -hmm. right? And so this family, you know, coming together. Um, to worship God together, to do ministry together. Um, it's really big. Acts 18, 24 through 26. It's also with um, uh, Priscilla and Aquila. You want to read that? Uh, now a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord though he knew only the baptism of John. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. Mm -hmm. Right. So they noticed a flaw in this young man's uh, ministry, right? Something he was missing. And he's like, let's get this guy. Mm -hmm. let's, let's not set him straight, but let's help him out. And, and, and so he can be uh, more effective. But they were together when they did that, right? right? Both of them, right? Uh, I think um, Elder West uh, called this out, um, if I'm not mistaken, back when he did Acts, that, you know, you see references to uh, to these two um, probably like, like four or five times, but every time you see it, you see them together, mm -hmm. right? They're, all, or they're always together when Paul talks about them and when we, when we see references to them um, and, and they're, they're doing ministry. And call, Paul, Paul calls both of them his, uh, his partners in ministry. Um, and the last, so if, if you look at First Chronicles uh, 23 through 27, uh, that's Old Testament. Um, what you see is uh, God's people, families being uh, elected mm -hmm. um, to do various things um, uh, for, the, for, the, for God's chosen people. We're only going to cover a couple, obviously, a couple of uh, short scriptures, um, and, then, uh, and then we'll close. But First uh, Chronicle 23 and 28. All right, I'm going to start at 27. Okay. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from 20 years old and above because their duty was to help the sons of Aaron in the service of the house of the Lord, in the courts and in the chambers, in the purifying of all the holy things and the work of the service of the house of God. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And that's all about performing ceremonies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so they were selected families to, to commit themselves to uh, doing the ceremonies. And then we're going to do First Chronicles 25 and 1. We're going to start there. Moreover, David and the captains of the army separated for the service some of the sons of Asaph, of Heman, and of Jeduthan, who should prophesy with harps, stringed instruments, and cymbals. Mm -hmm. Can you go down to 6 too? Mm -hmm. All these were under the direction of their father for the music in the house of the Lord um, with cymbals, string instruments, and harps for the service of the house of God. Mm -hmm. And so this is where families are 
being selected to do uh, to do praise and worship, basically, mm -hmm. right? And so we see in, in those two scriptures, family, they're working together. And there's some advantages with family coming together, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think about some of the things that we do together, you know, like uh, when we recorded the... Uh, the, the little video clip for, for the church, for the youth, mm -hmm. a while, you know, not, not too long ago. We recorded it. We gave it to Kelsey. She edited it and submitted <laughs> it. You know, and, you know, and when we have something that we're writing, we give it to Kyra to proofread. You know, so we're working together as a family and pulling each other's, you know, skills, skill sets to be able to minister together because I'm not a great proofreader, mm -hmm. right? But we have somebody in the family that is, mm -hmm. that can help out. You know, I'm not all that great with video editing, but we got somebody in the family that that, that can help us out. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so, you know, so the, the family unit comes together to help facilitate um, ministry in whatever area that uh, that God um, has for you. So highly encourage, um, if you're not, to consider, um, you know, joining up with your husband or wife or brother or sister or, or, or whatever to start doing ministry together. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can get the whole family to do it, that yeah. would be that would be awesome. Um, uh, so in summary, the family is super, super, super duper important. Um, purpose of family, we cover two things, to reflect heaven and to, uh, to offer fellowship and support for one another. Um, obviously do ministry together. We kind of already talked about that. Um, we gave you some examples of family, right? They were highly, they highly respected each other, right? The, 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 the children honored the parents and the parents, they, they honored the children, um, and again, they did ministry together. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we see in scripture. Way more stuff we could have covered. Um, we're already at like 38 minutes now, so we're gonna um, we're gonna close um, next week. We're gonna talk about marriage, right? And that we're gonna get a bit deep on, in marriage. Um, if you want to read a little ahead, um, we're gonna be covering uh, Ephesians. We're gonna be in Ephesians where Paul talks about marriage. I, we covered some of it already. Um, uh, let's see, Ephesians 5, uh, if you look at Ephesians 5, 24 through the first part of 6, uh, Ephesians 6, it talks about marriage in the church. Um, and actually, if you just start there and just look at the cross-references, that's kind of what we're going to do. Um, and so you'll you'll probably come up with the same scriptures that we're, so I don't have to give you all of them. But um, but yeah, take, take a look at that um, in, in your study time. Um, and when we come back next week, we will dive into uh, marriage. It's going to be really good because I can't wait to hear what you have to say about marriage, <laughs> right? Because what, what we don't want to do is I don't want to, I, I don't even want to talk about the wife perspective. Mm. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it, right? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about the man's perspective and my wife here is going to talk about the wife's perspective and she's going to give her perspective and we're going to give examples, right? Family examples. I think it's so helpful. Um, scriptural ex examples are great and needed. Um, but it's also good to see people actually walking it out, right? And again, we're not per we're not perfect, but but I think we're doing an okay job, um, you know, walking it out. And so we're going to give you some examples on on uh, how we how we handle you know marriage and whatnot. It's not going to be like marriage counseling or anything like that, but just to 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 give you a real world today examples of uh, of marriage. Um, I think that's all. That's it. Okay, go ahead. Some of my takeaways from um, the teaching were that, like you said, um, it, family is important to mm -hmm. God. God instituted family. He instituted family. So it that is, is what God says it is, right. not right. what man says it is, right. not what right. we may think it is or right. what me, we may have been taught that it is. So the only mm -hmm. way for us um, to even be able to create biblical families is through the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking that, you know, this year we're, our theme is reset, refocus, and renew in 2022. Mm -hmm. And this is a great time to do that with your family. If there's some things that you need to reset, some ways you need to refocus, if, you know, things are kind of off, mm -hmm. you know, these type of teachings, looking at the scriptures and finding out what God says about the family, not just what to do, but what God has already done. Right. The fact that we're all redeemed, mm -hmm by God already. So we're able to walk in these things. We're able to walk in whatever it is that he says yep. um, that the family is supposed to look like, but we can't come up with these ideas on our own and call it a biblical right. marriage. Right. We can't call or a biblical family. We have to look at the Bible right. and see what God said is um, the biblical family and, yeah. and just praying for your families, like um, for all of these things that we're talking about to manifest mm -hmm. and for the grace of God 
to be able to cover us, to be able to to help us through and to be able to be whatever it is that he called us to be yeah. um, as families. Because, you know, children, if you were talking about children mm -hmm. and how people don't see them as they're supposed to be. We, we don't see the husbands and wives that we're supposed to be. The parents are not respected. That can all change. We're all believers. Right. We're right. all redeemed. So we should be seeing the way that God sees things. Right. We right. shouldn't be seeing the same way that the world is. Right. Our families shouldn't reflect the world. They should reflect the scriptures. Right. So right. that's what I saw when um, all of the examples that we gave that were from scriptures were basically so that we can see the mm -hmm. picture and not make up our own. Right. And it, it's basically a biblical worldview, right? Yeah. It's it's we're looking at the world through the lens of scripture. Right. Not looking at scripture through the lens of the world, mm -hmm. right? And so it's it's totally different way to look at how we're supposed to live. Because if we take culture in the world and we try to understand scripture based on that, we'll get it totally wrong. We'll get it twisted. But if we take scripture and then we look at at the world and we'll say, okay, this is how we do it, and then and the world is wrong in how they want to operate in in family and whatnot. And it's okay if they want to do that. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve, we gonna serve the Lord, right? right? We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to do it God's way um, because we want God to get the glory out of it. Yeah. And everything was made by him and for him. Right. right. So it's all for his glory. It's not for our glory. It's all to glorify God and to bring redemption to a dying world. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. And there's great pressure on the world to for us to not exercise you know, um, biblical families, even, right. right? I mean, in, in certain areas of the biblical family, it, it can be difficult to freely exercise that. Um, but but God, he will grace us, mm -hmm. right, to be able to, to do that if we submit to him and allow him to work it out in our lives. He'll, mm -hmm. he'll, he'll cover us. Um, right. As he always have, he'll, mm -hmm. he'll cover us. Um, so God bless you. Is that all you have? Yeah. yeah. Everything else? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. This was cool. God bless you. Um, again, we're going to go a, a bit deeper uh, next week. We're going to talk about marriage. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Again, I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Um, um, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely put them in the chat and we'll look at them uh, between now and then. And we'll answer any questions then um, in the first you know, five minutes or whatever um, of next week's session. Um, but until we see you guys again next week, stay, stay in, in faith, faith and keep, keep looking, looking up. up. And expect great things. That's right. Expect great things. Yeah.